Hello, accounting superstars. Welcome to the Accounting Superstar channel. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Professor Don Bush, and I've been teaching accounting for about 30 years and have been a CPA for about that long, and I've got lots of fantastic ways to explain accounting. So today's lesson here is sale leaseback, lessee perspective. This can be a little confusing. It's not easy here. What's happening here is that when we get to a construction, owns a big giant truck, and you can see a picture of this big giant truck right here. It's a big earth moving truck. And uh, they use this truck, they like the truck, they, they use it every day. And uh, yet at the same time, when we get to construction, need some money. And so what they're planning on doing, they're going to sell this truck. To somebody and and uh, then lease it back immediately in fact they're going to lease it back right away on the very same day that they sell it and in fact the truck will probably never ever even leave, leave the job site so here are the details here's what's going on folks and when you're doing these problems there's a there's a lot of information here and so I like to take the time and just list it out in that way I've got it organized and also I've got the numbers here in a column which I can reference easy and I hope you do this on Excel in fact I don't know how in the world you would not do this on Excel um, it'd be pretty pretty tough if you're not using Excel so this is a good time to get used to Excel and folks if you have all your numbers here in a row like this in a column uh, you can just transfer the numbers down below and not worry about typos and um, you know what was that number it's all right there for you so here you go step number one understand the facts so here you go 1.1 when we get to construction owns and uses an earth mover truck but is short on cash 1.2 Joe investor has lots of money and would like a safe investment with a good return on investment 1.3 per when we get to its books, the truck's original cost was 500000 So when we get to it, uh, purchase this truck, they spent 500000 on this truck. It's a huge truck. 1.4 per when we get to its books, the accumulated depreciation to date, and this is up to date, is $100,000. So they've been using this truck for a little while. 1.5 Joe investor agrees to purchase the truck at fair market value when we get to it sells the truck to Joe investor for 450,000 so the uh, title is transferred over to Joe investor Joe investor is the the true owner of the truck now 1.6 when we get to a construction agrees to immediately lease the truck from Joe investor uh, when we get to a construction still needs that truck 1.7, the lease begins on January 1st, 2001, right at the beginning of the year. The truck is not of a specialized nature. If, you, if you've been watching previous videos, you know that the specialized nature means that this truck was not specially built for when we get to construction. There are other people on this planet that could use this truck. Uh, maybe not a lot of people, but there are other people. So uh, this is not a truly specific truck. 1.9 lease is non cancelable lease term is three years so when we get to it construction is leasing it back for just three years and the 1.11 the trucks remaining economic life is eight years so uh, out of these eight years three of those years are going to be leased by when we get to construction 1.12 estimated salvage value at the end of the lease and I've got here in big bright red letters unguaranteed that is so important if you've been watching these videos you know why and so the estimated salvage value is unguaranteed three hundred thousand dollars so it's just a guess on what that truck will be worth at the end of the three-year lease 1.13 here's something re really important no lease renewal options uh, when we get to a construction will not own the truck they are not getting the truck back at the end of the lease there's no lease renewal 1.14 Joe investors interest rate is equal to when we get to its incremental borrowing rate which is 8% and this is rather important too uh, a, a small detail is that uh, if Joe investors interest rate was less then when we get to it, we would use the lesser of the two or or the other way works too if when we get to its incremental borrowing rate was less we would use the smaller why is that well the the reason is that smaller interest rates produce higher net present values which uh, increases the chances of 
capitalizing this lease, calling it a financing lease. Coming down the page here. Here we go. We're almost done. 1.15. The lease payments are made annually beginning on January 1st, 2001. Beginning of each year, not at the end, at the beginning. 1.16. When we get to it, depreciates equipment on a straight line basis. 1.17. When we get to it, pays Joe Investor for executory costs. What are executory costs? Well, it's things like maintenance. Um, property taxes, insurance. So Joe Investor apparently wants to make sure this truck is well taken care of. So Joe Investor is charging when we get to it $5,000 each year to maintain that truck. And Joe Investor will make sure it gets maintained. So determine the annual payment. Here we go to step two. This is no different than before, folks. 2.1. Find the present value of the of the residual value. It doesn't matter if it's guaranteed or unguaranteed. The residual value is 300000 The interest rate's 8%. The lease term, three years. And the present value is 238150 How do we find that? Well, it's easy with Excel. All you do is go up here to formulas, come down to financial, and come down to NPV. NPV, there you go. And you get a little chart that looks like this, and the print is kind of small, so I'll read it to you. The rate is 8%. Uh, now, this is the present value of a lump sum, a lump sum in three years. The lump sum is $300,000. So the value for year one is zero. And the value for year two is zero. And the value for year three is 300,000. All I have to do is click on it because I've got the number written right there. You could type in 300,000 if you want to. Now, folks, it's really a good idea to put in those zeros. Otherwise, the computer might get a little confused. You never know. So uh, all you do at this point is hit OK. I'm going to cancel out of this because I already have the answer. And if I were to press OK, it would probably mess things up. So cancel out. So 238,150. So 2.2 coming down the page here. Determine the amount to be recovered through the lease payments. Well, the fair value of the lease truck is 450,000. The present value, the residual value is 238,150. We found that right up above. And so the amount to be recovered through the lease payments is 211,850. A very important number. So let's figure out what the payments are going to be. A lot of times in these problems, the uh, textbooks just tell you what the payment is, but now you know how to figure it out. Determine amount of annual payment. So you take your 211850, which we found right up above, interest rate 8%, number of payments at the beginning of each year, and we're going to use Excel. Now the answer is $76,116, but how is that figured out? Well, you just go up to formulas. Financial, go to PMT for payment. And there it is. And all you do is fill in the spaces. So the rate, the rate is 8%. All I have to do is click on it. The number of periods is three. There we go. And the present value is 211,850. And lastly, the type, we have to type in the number one. If you type in the number one, that tells the computer that payments are at the beginning of each year. Very important. If you leave it blank, the computer will think the payments are at the end of each year. So I'm typing in the number one. At this point, all we would have to do is press OK, but I'm going to cancel out because I already have it figured out. $76,116. Now, that's not the end of the payments. Add executory costs. That was the maintenance. Total annual lease payments, $81,116. Uh, that includes the executory costs. So coming down to step number three, all these steps are important. I can't say which one's the most important because if you skip any, you will run into problems. So here we go. The minimum lease payments. So what we have here, we've got four things that constitute the minimum lease payments. And this helps us figure out the amount to capitalize the lease at. So present value of minimum lease payments. So here are the four things. Uh, the rental payments. The rental payments are 76116 I got that from right up above here. Bargain purchase option. When we get to a construction does not have a bargain purchase option. They cannot buy that truck back for a dollar or some very cheap price. 
guaranteed residual value? Well, there's no guaranteed residual value, but there is unguaranteed. So we are going to leave it blank. Penalty for failure to renew lease. They are not renewing the lease and there's no penalty, so we're leaving that blank. So finally, here's, here's where we get down to it. The present value of lease payments, the amount to be recovered through the lease payments. So here are the lease payments. But what is the present value of the lease payments? We figured that out right up above here. There it is, 211,850. Very important number. So that is going to be our amount to be capitalized by when we get to a construction, the lessee. So coming down here, as you guys know, uh, leases can be classified as either operating or financing lease. Now, operating lease used to be really easy. You were just renting an asset. You were not buying it. And what happened was a lot of companies would uh, abuse this rule and uh, they, they would be buying things, financing things through a lease and not including the asset and related liability on their balance sheet because they were saying, hey, we're just renting it. And so the uh, people who make up accounting rules said, hey, this is not good. It makes comparing companies very difficult where we have some companies uh, having uh, assets and liabilities on their balance sheet and other companies not having assets and liabilities on their balance sheet. So let's make it so everybody has assets and liabilities on their balance sheet. So the moral of the story is, is that it doesn't matter if it's an operating lease or a financing lease, we're going to put the asset and liability on the balance sheet. But the way we do it, the way we go about it is very, very different. So let's see what happens here. So I've got all the answers to all the questions are no. There's five questions and the answer is no. So that tells us right away it's an operating lease because if any one of these no's were a yes, it would be a financing lease. All it does is take one yes and it's a financing lease. So. We already know it's an operating lease. Test number one, is there a transfer of ownership? No, uh, when we get to construction, we'll not own that truck again. Bargain purchase option at the end of the lease? The answer is no to that. Uh, lease period 75% of the economic life? The answer is no, uh, we've got 38% here. So how's that figured out? Well, the lease is happening for three years. The economic life is eight years you go three divided by eight that's 38 percent that's not even close to 75 percent of the economic life so we'll answer no test number four the present value of the lease payments equals 90 percent of fair market value i've got a no here let's see how it's figured out well the present value of the minimum lease payments is 211,850. we figured that out back in the previous step step number three it's right up here there it is Amount to be capitalized, 211850. And the fair market value of the truck is 450000 Well, if you do a little division, you get 47%. That is 211850 divided by 450 is 47%. That's not even close to 90% of the fair market value. So it flunks this test also, so we have a no. Specialized use? Nope. It's a nice big dump truck, but uh, a lot of people could use it, not just when we get to construction. So the conclusion is this is an operating lease. Coming down to the amortization table, a critical stage here, folks, and uh, you want to make sure with this amortization table, it all ends up being zero at the bottom right-hand corner. That lets you know that you probably did this right. So here we go. Here's what's happening with the uh, amortization table. So at the very beginning of the lease, 1-1, 2001, we write down the carrying value of the lease liability, which is 211,850. We've seen that number quite a few times before. We figured it out in step number three. On, also on 1-1, 2001, uh, when we get to a construction, makes a payment of $81,116. There's some executory costs and the uh, lease liability is reduced by 76,116. Why 76,116? Well, all you do is you go 81,116 minus 5,000, you get 76,116. So now the carrying value of the lease liability is 135,735. We get that by 211,850 minus 76,116, you get 135,735. There you go, coming down to the beginning of the second year, the when we get to construction makes another cash payment of 81,116. Executory costs of 5,000. 
Interest, $10,859. Where'd that come from? Well, the interest rate is 8%. That's from the information up above. Um, and we'd go 8% of 135, 735, you get 10,859. So the reduction of the lease liability, here's what you do. You take the payment, minus away the executory costs, minus away the interest, and you end up with 65,257. So how do we get 70,478? You just go 135, 735, minus 65, 257, and you get 74. Seven, eight. Finally, at the beginning of the third year, they make another payment. Same old thing happens here. And you end up with zero. How do we end up with zero? Well, 70,478 minus 70,478 is zero. If you're off by a couple of pennies, that's okay. If you're off by 50 bucks or 100 bucks or a thousand dollars or a million dollars, you did something wrong probably. So you want to make sure it ends up being zero or very, very close to zero. So coming down here to the journal entries. First of all, we have to record the sale of the truck because when we get to a construction is selling this truck. They are uh, transferring ownership to uh, Joe Investor. So here's what's happening. So cash is coming in, a lot of cash, $450,000. And um, we're debiting accumulated depreciation for 100000 That's the amount of depreciation that when we get to it has already claimed on the truck. And so we're debiting it to get rid of the accumulated depreciation. We're getting rid of the truck. We got to get rid of the associated accumulated depreciation. We're crediting truck for $500,000. That is, was the original cost of the uh, truck. And to make it all balance, we need $50,000 a credit to make a balance. And it we'll call it a gain. If we needed a debit up here to make a balance, we would have called that a loss. So that's the entry to record the sale of the truck there. Nothing special at all. Now on January 1st, probably within minutes, we're recording the lease. We're debiting right of use asset. It's an intangible asset for 211850. And that number we have seen many times before. It's the capitalized uh, amount of the lease. And we are crediting lease liability for the exact same amount, 211850. And by golly, that same number is right up there. And also on the same day, when we get to construction, is making their first payment. Now they're making a payment of cash of 81,116, you can find that number right there. They are uh, reducing the lease liability of 76,116 right there. And they are debiting maintenance expense of 5,000. So all these numbers coming from this first row right here. So there you go. So wow, a lot of, uh, lot of accounting entries right at the beginning. Now there is a, a journal entry that's going to take place at the end of the first year at the very end and here's what's happening we are uh, debiting lease expense for 76,116 how do we get that well it's 81,116 minus the five so there we go 76,116 dollars and uh, lease liability is being credited by 10,859 where does that number come from it's right here, it's the interest. Uh, the interest has got to be paid the next year. So interest is accrued during this first year. And this entry is taking place at the end of the first year. So we need to recognize that. Now, right of use asset, we are amortizing away the right of use asset. For 65,257, where is that number coming from? Well, about the only way to figure it out is uh, if we have 76,116 minus away 10,859, you get 65,257. So there you go. Coming down the page here. Here are the journal entries for 2002. 2002 is not as busy. So in 2002, they are making another payment here. They are crediting cash of 81116 So there you go. It comes from there. The maintenance expense is 5000 And we are reducing the lease liability by 76116 I think the easiest way to figure this out is just take your 81116 minus away 5 and... You, there's the debit to make it all balance. Coming down to the end of December, the end of December, 
we make an adjusting entry at the very end of the year. So here we go. Lease expense, 76116 Where does that number come from? Well, it's 81116 minus 5000 You get 76116 Lease liability. Here's the interest that has accrued. Right of use asset, it's simply a plug. What's a plug? It just whatever it takes to make a balance. 76,116 minus 5,638, you get 70,478. So coming down the list here, here's the last year, folks, and it's not too difficult. So they're making another payment. These entries happen to be all the same. Cash, credit 81,116, maintenance expense, five. Lease liability, is being debited for 76116 it's just whatever it takes to make this journal entry balance and the adjusting entry at the end of the year now there's no interest at the end of the year because the lease liability was paid off at the beginning of year three look at this 1-103 it's at lease liability zero at the beginning of the year it was zero so there's no interest for year three but we still need to record at least expense 76116 and the right of as right of use asset is being credited for 76116 since there's no interest that's all there's to it now these numbers it's hard to follow these numbers and where they all come from just to make sure i was doing this right i thought well if i'm going to make a youtube video out of this i better make sure i'm doing it right so uh what i did is i uh, made T accounts for right of use asset and lease liability and I knew if everything goes well at the very end of the lease the they should be equal to zero so right of use asset we I began with 211850 because that was the amount capitalized and, and if you go back and look at the journal entries you can see where this all came from lease liability same thing 211850 so anytime I made a journal entry that that involved right of use asset, I posted it to my little T account here. And so if you take 211850 and minus away the amortization for the first year, the amortization for the second, amortization for the third year, it ended up being zero. And I thought, hooray, I, I must be doing this right. And lease liability here, it starts out at 211850 and every time I reduce that lease liability, every time I debited lease liability, as I did here for 76116, I reduced it. And, and these numbers along here are just double checks. It's just, I was keeping a, a running total of the balances here. And anytime I credited lease liability for the interest, I, I put it here. So all I did was post my numbers from the journal entries and it ended up being zero also. So that assured me that I must be doing this right. So ladies and gentlemen, in a nutshell, what happened here? Well, um, when we get to a construction, sold a big truck and they needed the money. That's why they sold it. And so, uh, but they still needed the truck. And so what they did is they leased the truck back right away. Now, at the beginning of the lease, we didn't know if this was an operating lease or a financing lease. Either way, uh, when we get to construction, has to record an asset and associated liability with, uh, with the truck. It doesn't matter if it's an operating lease or financing lease. But the way you go about your accounting is very different. And so that's why these uh, journal entries. So you could say this sale leaseback uh, example here follows the brand new rules uh, that the accounting profession has developed to handle operating leases. So that way, every company gets to uh, have assets and liabilities on their balance sheet. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope this helped. Uh, let me know. Uh, if it did, hit that subscribe button. Also, uh, hit the uh, like button. That way I know that you like this. Also, uh, YouTube will know that you liked it, and that way YouTube will show you more of these videos. So until next time, over now.